Hello. I thought I would pop in here to do a, um, give you a forecast of what's going on for the new moon and explain it to you. So this is Tamasa Maka Pinlock. I'm known as a self-care queen, um, master shaman mentor. And um, I think one of the reasons why I started reading charts is because the work I do is so connected to the cosmos. So I wanted to understand it fully so I could apply it to the five point of star, which is man here on earth. And so that's the best thing I can say is that astrology is the five point of star. It's man right here on this planet earth. And there's so many ways to explain. So as above, so below here. And so today I want to talk about the new moon in Aries that's coming up here on April 12th, excuse me, April 11th at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time or 10.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So let's look at exactly what does it mean when we say there's a new moon. A new moon is when the sun and the moon are conjunct. They're at the same degrees and the same sign. And so this new moon is in Aries. If you notice, we have the, the moon and the sun at 22 degrees, a little bit of, you know, 20, about 25 minutes in Aries. Well, what is Aries about? This is the sign for Aries. Aries is about confidence, about boldness, entrepreneurship, and that worry energy. It kind of activates things. It likes to be active and it can be egoic, meaning that it is about the I amness. Who am I? And so when we look at this chart here, because the houses do play a big role here, and because this Aries happens to be in the sixth house, and by the way, we're reading it for everyone, the collective, that's what this chart is for. And so you can look and see in your personal natal chart where this might occur. This, these are called transits because that's what they are. We're looking at the transit chart captured at 7.30 p.m. on Sunday night. Pacific daylight time. And so, you know, this is about confidence. And because it's in the sixth house, this is about confidence in our health and confidence in our work, confidence in our daily work, our daily rituals, our daily self care, and how we set up our days every day. And so, you know, it's no mistake that it's about our health because it's sitting in the sixth house. Seems to be everyone's concern. Everyone's concerned about COVID, right? But even more so, I think that what we're seeing is, you know, this whole thing with Venus. Venus is sitting in Aries as well. She's at 26 degrees, 42 minutes. Venus is kind of a shining star right now. And it's a very key piece here. Um, I want you to think of her as the evening star here. And she is a little bit conjunct with the sun and the moon. I like tighter conjunction, but we can call it a conjunction. She's about, you know, four four minutes, or excuse me, four degrees apart from them. And so, you know, she's in a different house than them. And let's talk about what Venus is about. Venus is about relationships and about money. It can be, and not just money, it can be about accumulations of the things we have. You know, Venus rules Libra and Taurus. So think about what those two signs are about. Taurus is about, you know, your self-care and what you value, your self-value. And then it can also look at how, you know, Taurans like to uh, have a nice little cushion for themselves. And then also it can be about our relationship with food because Taurans love food. Um, the other thing would be Libra. Well, Libra is all about relationships, partnerships, and relating to one another. And so, you know, it's that balance of, you know, yin yang going on. It, they like to play devil's advocate, but they also a little bit of pleaser. So that's what this can be about. But I like to say, you know, Venus is sitting in the seventh house in Aries. Well, what is that about? You know, Aries is about the self. Venus doesn't like to be in Aries. She's not comfortable in Aries because Aries is opposite of Libra. So it's an, a, a sign that would be in opposition to her. But so let's look here. You know, she, she basically is saying, okay, we have to look at thyself, the relationship with thyself. Thy, um, thy, thy self-value, what do we have stored away that we've accumulated uh, to bring to the table here? 
to be in relationship. And so, you know, she sits in the seventh house and the seventh house is all about partnership and marriage. And it can be about partnership in a life or partnership in business as well. And so, but it could be about the enemies as well on the flips, on the, on the shadow side. Now, I want you to, to pay attention to this because, you know, there's a stellium going on here in Aries and Aries is about that bold and confidence. So, you know, Venus is discovering who she is but she's also being bold and confident in what she wants, what she values, what she stands for. Um, and, you know, and so she wants to be real clear about this. So any relationships that begin right now with this, um, this is all going to be about, you know, value in thyself and bringing that value to the self, to the relationship. But what's even more so is she is sextiling. Mars and Gemini. Now, Mars and Gemini, Mars and Gemini, Gemini is a fast moving sign. It's very um, agile on its feet and its thinking uh, and its intelligence. Uh, and so Mars is activating that, but also by the same token, um, Gemini likes to do two or three things at the same time. So you might find yourself wanting to do more than one thing at the same time. Now, this can be a lot of nervous energy. Mars sitting in Gemini. But, you know, Venus is sort of like wanting it to, you know, she's having a relationship with them. So she wants them to listen up here. You know, she moves fast. So does Mars. Mars activates everything. So Mars is sitting in the eighth house in Gemini. Let's talk about what that's about. Mars in the eighth house in Gemini is about intimacy. Eighth house is all about intimacy. It can also be about vulnerability, transformation, taxes, uh, death. But, you know, I mean, yeah, we can look at the collective and, you know, so Venus is sitting here and going, you know, I value partnership and health and all those things because she's sitting here conjunct with the sun and the moon sitting in the sixth house, which is the house of health, you know, that and, and then daily self-care and our work. So what are we doing in our work that we value to be activated here with intimacy? And so, you know, she is, calling forth venus is calling forth but mars is going to win because it moves slower than venus but mars is the activator remember that so it's activating intimacy and a communication with intimacy vulnerability so you might find yourself being much more vulnerable than you normally would be you know sharing things about yourself with someone so it's activating those things and being bold about it because mars is a very bold planet and remember, it is that warring energy. So they support each other. Sex tiling means they support each other 60 degrees apart. The other thing on the other side, sex tiling it is, uh, um, excuse me, sex tiling Venus is Jupiter sitting in Aquarius. And Jupiter sits in Aquarius. Aquarius is about the collective, but it's also about how do you contribute to this collectiveness? Now, Jupiter likes to expand and grow. So what Jupiter is doing is amplifying this business with Venus, but it's also in relationship with Mars as well in Gemini. So it's amplifying intimacy, transparency, authenticity, uh, transformation, uh, all of those, especially in relationships. So this is a good time. This might actually be a good time to actually, um, you might see relationships coming back into right relationship, you know, especially if it was a friendship because Aquarius can be that collective, it can be friends, acquaintances, but it's sitting in the fourth house. The fourth house is all about real estate, location, relationship with mother. Um, it could also be the one, not necessarily mother, but could be the one who actually has more of the feminine energy. But it's interesting because the Aquarian is a very masculine energy yet, but it's also very fixed. Um, and so, you know, it's opening us up to what might, uh, we am, what might we grow here with ourselves and in intimacy and relationship and partnerships and business, businesses, business partnerships. And so that's kind of what this triangle is about. It is a very important triangle to look at. And it's probably one of the most significant triangles sitting here in this chart here. But yet and still, it does have a relationship with the sun and the moon sitting in that sixth house. So you need to be in good health. You need to be having good rituals. 
and sitting in that place of where you take care of your house. So that might be a priority right now. And that might be a priority when Venus is choosing a relationship right now. Mm, is this person taking care of themselves? Is this person in great relationship? And Venus is doing it for thyself. So you might find yourself pulling back and say, hey, I'm going to take care of myself, right? And so that is a very significant of this chart here right now. Um, I, I do want to point out some other aspects because they're just as important here. So, you know, yet and still we have, you know, the sun and the moon. They are sextiling Mars and Gemini as well. So it's a very key piece for Mars to be activating this health piece, this piece of um, being doing your inner daily work and working on thyself because it is an Aries. So, you know, self-care needs to, you need to up it, okay? And it probably automatically is being upped or amplified or whatever because of these aspects here. The other key piece I wanna bring out here is there's some, um, oh God. So Pluto is squaring, Pluto and Capricorn. Remember Pluto and Capricorn is really, all about what we bring down to this earth here. You know, whenever you see a planet and an earth sign, it's all about how do we manage it right here in this 3D world. You know, Gemini is an air sign and Aries is a fire sign. So Aries can be a little bit emotional. Gemini is all about the mind, right? So we hardly have any water stuff going on, but I will bring in Pisces in just a bit here to talk about that. But Pluto is squaring Venus and the moon and the sun. And Aries. So what exactly does that mean? She is stripping back layers. She's making sure you are transforming your health, transforming your relationships, transforming your relationship to yourself, transforming partnerships. So here's the deal. If the vibration ain't matching, people are going to go away. And it's not that you need to do anything about it. It will just happen because you begin to vibrate what you need to vibrate. And Pluto is transforming that for you right now. So you might feel that things are being filtered out right now as according to what relationships will work and what won't. And so, you know, Pluto doesn't play. She makes, uh, he makes sure that, you know, that things are going to be for the best of your health. And I'm going to say wealth as well, because Venus sits in there. Venus sits and Venus is all about the wealth as well. What are you stockpiling for yourself? Um, so I also want to bring out this relationship of Pluto and Neptune. Very significant. This is considered another sextile. So sextile supports each other. Squares challenge things. Trines, which you see this Jupiter and Mars doing, is supportive. Now, here's the deal here. Um, Pluto and Neptune are sextiling each other. Neptune wants you to be your higher self, okay? And Pluto is making sure of that by stripping back the layers. But here's the deal, is Neptune has a challenge with Mars and Gemini. Mars and Gemini wants to move fast. It wants to go, go, go. It wants to activate things. And so Neptune's like, hold on here, slow down here. You know, we're going to wait for the appropriate timeline for when is appropriate for you to activate all this intimacy that you're bringing into your life here. So very key piece here. Mars and Gemini, by the way, I want to point out, you know, it could mean that you're feeling and hearing people communicate with gruffness and boldness and no filters, just telling it like it is. And, and it can feel a lot like fighting energy or warrior energy. And you're like, what is this about, right? So it's really a good time to dig deep as to what is really going on here. Where, where you know, dig deep, because that's what the eighth house is about, the house of intimacy. It allows you to go deep in transformation. And remember, Jupiter is amplifying it, but Neptune... What she's doing is say, uh, by the way, you know, you, you can be delusional about what you think is going to happen. I, I can make it look delusional. 
But if you do your inner work, I can help you achieve to get to your higher self here. So Neptune can be uh, visions that you have. It can be about dreams and it can be about illusions that you are not willing to see. So the eighth house and Pluto want you to see the, the shadow pieces and the illusions, see the truth. Whereas Neptune can actually paint a picture of, no, 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 we're going to show only the good stuff. So here's the deal. You know, Mars can bring about the transformation or can bring out the shadows, can activate those pieces there. And so Neptune is sort of like, okay, it wants to paint a picture over there, but it's like, wait, 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 you haven't reached your higher self yet. So this is some activation energy of bringing in your higher self. Neptune sits in his home sign of Pisces. It's the only planet in a water sign right now. And, you know, water is about emotions, about going deep within. And this sits in the fifth house, the house of creativity, the house of children, um, the house of romanticism. So romantic relationships can come from this. Uh, yeah. So I want you to know that that, but romantic relationships in the fifth house aren't necessarily long-term. So I want you to remember that the ones that long-term is Venus sitting in the seventh house. Okay. So you want to look at that. So don't be illusioned by this. So the other piece is that we want to look at is Saturn. Saturn has a relationship with a couple planets here. Um, the significant one that they're showing on this chart right now is the one it has with Uranus and Taurus sitting in the ninth house, another earth sign, you know, squaring uh, Saturn in Aquarius. And so this square here, who's going to win? Uranus. Uranus is about random, can be about random things happening, surprises from God. But because it sits in the seventh house, it is going to be about it can be about relationships and businesses, excuse me, business relationships that are partnerships that are coming up here. And Saturn is going to make sure that it's for the long term. So Saturn's, you know, saying, hey, 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 we got to make sure this is long term. This is just isn't random and happening. And Uranus is like, hey, here's a surprise from God here. And so this can be about real estate deals because it's sitting in the fourth house. It could be about the home life. Maybe you're moving in with somebody or somebody moving in with you. You could be switching that. And this is for the collective overall. You could be relocating. Uh, the other thing I want to bring out is Saturn sitting in Aquarius, but sextiling Mercury in Aries. So what this is about, sharp communication again, bold communication. It could be gruff. And so it is going to affect the long term with the collective. So you need to be cognizant of that. So Saturn is going to um, bring about this and uh, support your communication. Uh, and specifically when it comes to health and work. Isn't that interesting? Because we're sitting in that sixth house, self-care and all those good things. So it is supporting the long-term aspect of this communication that is going out to everyone uh, about your health and about your work. The other piece here is Chiron sitting in Aries. Now, Chiron in Aries is all about boldness. And so let's talk about what Chiron is about. Chiron is about the wounded healer. It's an asteroid. It's not a planet. And so it's about right now, because it's sitting in Aries, it is about our not having confidence. And we're healing this piece of confidence in our health, maybe even in our health system, because it is trining Saturn in the fourth house. So, or excuse me, sextiling Saturn in the fourth house. Now, you know, I want to talk about what it means for you specifically, depending on where it is in your chart. But here as a collective, we're looking at, you know, our confidence in our health system. Wow, that brings chills to me as I talk, say that. And so, you know, we're working on that. Um, the other aspect would be that 
um, this Chiron also uh, sextiles Gemini or the North Node in Gemini. And so this is considered a, a sextile. And how would it support the North Node is bringing up and highlighting something we need to look at. So this is our vulnerability, I'm gonna say, because Jim is vulner communicating vulnerabilities. And so because the 11th house, or excuse me, the eighth house is all about, you know, vulnerability, transformation, intimacy, and Gemini is all about communication and thinking and it's intelligence. So Gemini wants to be in his head, but you know, these planets here sitting here like, hello, because you're sitting in the eighth house, you got to drop down to your heart as well. So, and so this business of uh, sex tiling with Chiron is like, mm, I have to be honest, I'm not that confident about our health system and about my health right now. Um, so those kinds of things might come up. So, you know, I'm going to call in that this is a great time to call in what you want in a relationship, to call in your higher self, because these are all the points I've touched on, to call in your higher self so you don't have illusions and shadows that get in the way and then you're going down this road here because all roads lead to Rome, but it might be a road that might be a harder path here. And so, you know, this war energy likes to make things difficult. I just actually talk someone out of, you know, going down this warrior path here. So the thing is you want to call in for the new moon. The new moon is a great time to call in intentions. You want to call in that is what is in right relationship with yourself. That is what can activate what is in right relationship with thyself and amplify it. And, and also, you know, it can be about the money as well. Money is in partnerships, partnership in the marriage, which you guys might invest together, or partnership in business. That's a big one right here, right now, I'm going to say. Uh, it's really key for you. And you can go and look at your natal chart to see how it might be uh, communicating with these planets, planets or these transits right now. So one of the reasons why I like to do new moon despachos is because it brings in the new energy for the next 28 days. And right now we're calling in our higher, our activating our higher self because it's activation with Mars, um, activating the, the Neptune in Pisces right now. Neptune's our higher self. Um, we're also calling in these pieces of the right relationship. We're activating the right relationship as well. We're also amplifying this but also we're asking for it to be for the long term so that we work out all the kinks and bugs up front and we're being very, you know, um, upfront and honest about things. Now the key here, because Aries can be a little gruff, we're asking it to be upfront and honest, maybe in a softer way rather than such a um, gruff way, which many of us might be finding it. We can be bold, but we can also be bold and powerful in a way that is soft and heard instead of gruff and screaming and um, everything's energy. That's all I'm going to say. And so what despacho energy, despacho ceremonies do is help you to activate these things, but help you to activate them in the most calming vibration so that you can magnetize things to you rather than making it hard for you. And so allow the planets to support you in a way that supports you um, in the most highest form rather than supporting you in a form that feels um, a lot of efforting. All right, so if you'd like to join my new moon despacho in Aries, is taking place on Monday, April 12th at 5.30 p.m. Specific Daylight Time. There is a link I'll include it here. And um, it, there is a fee. It's a $50 fee if you sign up before Friday at 4.44 p.m. Now, I'm doing it on Monday because we have to wait for the moon board courses to go away. And so I'm not going to do a despacho late at night because they do take about an hour and a half and then have to burn it. So I'll be up to midnight kind of doing that kind of stuff. So instead we do it at the next day after the moon board courses have gone away. And that's when your intentions actually take. 
um, when we have moon forward courses, it's time for you to be quiet and maybe fill into the right intentions and hear the call and then do the intentions. So um, I'd love for you to join me. And if you have any questions, please message me. And um, I just wanna point out that if you want a chart read, I do, do, I do do those as well. And you can reach out to me and I can connect with you and share all about that. Um, many blessings to you on this new moon and may you step into your higher self with ease and grace as you call in the right relationships, the right vibrations and attracting all that you want for yourself. Namaste, may you have a beautiful, beautiful weekend as we embark upon this new moon. <laughs>